Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. In this video, we will discuss the future of Project 75i. Recently, we heard some news about the Project 75i hitting a roadblock due to the withdrawal of German-based TKMS from the project. How does the pulling out of a German company going to impact the Project 75i? What is the reason for its pulling out? What can be done to revive the Project 75i? And how capable is South Korean DSME 3000 submarines, the lone bidder left in this bid? So let's begin the video. In the beginning, under Project 75i, six conventional submarines equipped with state-of-art air independent propulsion system will be indigenously built at the estimated cost of 43,000 crore. The Ministry of Defense in July had issued a request for proposal for the construction of six conventional diesel electric submarines under Make in India initiative and in collaboration with an established foreign submarine breeders. The Ministry of Defense has selected Majgaon Dock Shipbuilders Limited and LNT as a shipyards who will build the selected submarine design. Five companies has been shortlisted for the bids. They are Russian Ruben Design Bureau with Amorous 1650, France Naval Group with a conventional Barracuda design, Spain's Navantia with S80 Plus submarine, Germany's TKMS SDW214, and South Korea's DSME with DSME 3000 submarine. Later, a clause was added to this tender in which the contender that had a working and sea proven fuel cell based AIP submarine can offer AIP-based submarines to India. Presently, only two countries in the world have a proven AIP-based submarine. They are Germany and South Korea, resulting Spain, France and Russia out of this bid. Now, according to the media report, the German-based Thyssen Krupp marine system, who has offered Type 218 Invincible class submarine, has sent a letter to the government citing three major reasons for withdrawing from the contest. But due to the withdrawal of Germany TKMS, India is staring at a single vendor situation, which India usually try to avoid. Usually in such a situation, the RFP is scrapped and a fresh one is issued. If Navy is unable to convince the other vendors to submit their bid, then it might have to cancel or reissue a fresh tender at a later stage that will only further delay the program. This is the main reason the Project 75i hits the roadblock due to TKMS pulling out of the Project 75i. Now talking about the reasons cited by German-based TKMS for pulling out of the tender, the German-based TKMS has sent a letter to the government citing three major reasons for withdrawing from the contest. The company highlights the rigidity of RFP. As per TKMS, the time given to respond is such a huge deal is very short. In big ticket projects, the response time is around 12 to 15 months. Another reason from withdrawing from the contest is the liability clause. The company is expected to take responsibility of the boats which will be made by CPRs identified by the government. If anything goes wrong, the OEM will be held responsible and will have to pay the penalty. The third reason for the withdrawal from the contest is transfer of technology. As per TKMS, the intended degree of transfer of technology is not specified. There is no clarity how much technology needs to be transferred. Now talking about the only bidder left in the bid, the South Korean DSME 3000. Ten years ago, no one knew South Korea as a defense exporter. In 2011, South Korea Dowd Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering Limited DSME got the order of three upgraded Type 209 submarines from Indonesia. The Type 209 is a German design submarine that is also used by Indian Navy. After this, the DSME, while continuing its defense export, developed indigenously designed advanced Dosan and Chango class submarine for Republic of Korean Navy. The ROK Navy has a requirement of 10 Doshan and Chango class submarines to be delivered in three batches. These submarines have missiles and torpedo fire capability. The most unique feature of this submarine is its vertical launchers which can be only seen in US and Russian nuclear submarines. This does not happen in any diesel attack submarine. The submarine has six vertical launch tubes which can fire cruise missiles. 
Now, according to the media report in 2019, DSME had bid for Project 75I of India. The submarine that is being offered to India is DSME 3000, which is a variant of Dosan and Chango submarine. Its model was recently shown at International Maritime Defense Industry Exhibition MADEX. If we talk about DSME 3000 submarine, it is a 3300 ton displacement submarine whose length is 83.5 meter, beam is 9.7 meter and draft is 14.7 meter. Its maximum submerged speed is 20 knots per hour, but the Indian variant of this submarine will not have the vertical launch tubes like submarines of this class. It has been removed, keeping in mind the requirement of Indian Navy. However, the entire design has not been finalized yet. The South Korea is also going to offer submarine rescue vessels along with the submarines to India as a package deal. As you know, the AIP system is the most important requirement of Project 75I of the Indian Navy. The South Korean submarine uses AIP technology in Doshan and Chango class submarines. The South Korean's AIP is the best in the class. The fuel cell based AIP technology gives non-nuclear submarine the ability to remain submerged for a long period of time. This system does not require a battery as long as it gets a continuous source of fuel such as hydrogen and oxygen that can be obtained easily from the oxygen. It remains in the water for a long time. For how long, its exact time has been kept confidential. But relying on AIP technology is not right. Along with it, it is necessary to have a good quality battery which increases its endurance. To charge these batteries, submarines have to come to surface or periscopic depth. DSME has offered lithium-ion battery technology to Indian Navy whose efficiency is better than the conventional acid batteries Compared to the acid batteries, lithium-ion battery requires less charge and they do not require frequent visit to the surface to charge the batteries. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your view about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions on any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jaihind friends. Please like and subscribe our channel if you have not done already. We will soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector.